Presence Location Skills in MATLAB tutorials on YouTube. Uh, I did one recently on ICP in MATLAB and today I'm going to have another go at it because this would form the basis for an assignment for one of my classes. So we have an iterative closer point and we have two point clouds as demonstrated here on the right and the idea is if we could get these two to mesh into each other and that we could do this iteratively as we go along so that we'd be able to build up a complete 2D or 3D point cloud of whatever their view or observation that we're looking at. So there we, it would be in 2D so that you're trying to get these two here to mesh in together into one. There's a problem <coughs> as you can imagine because of the amount of data and here we have a slide of it just say for a, even a connect using your connect as a scanner which would be pretty poor in quality or somewhere in the round of the order of eight gigabytes per minute so to get these uh, point clouds our execution has to be fairly rapid so what we're going to be looking at is three different methods of implementing the icp and just when they're just in case you're completely new to it the whole idea is that you're trying to minimize the two point clouds that you're trying to minimize this distance and you keep iterating until you get the best match so that's what you're trying to do here okay so that's the powerpoint out of the way just to say that the source of the uh, the credit the intellectual uh, property uh, i got this from uh, matlab central and it's it belonged to these two chaps Jakob and Martin from the Technical University of Denmark so I'm using their code now <coughs> there is an ICP in the computer vision uh, uh, computer vision library that MATLAB supplied, supplies itself but these two lads wrote it so if you're doing it this way you have to download these two functions here uh, sorry a function and a demo script and if you're really new to MATLAB, which is, this is Enya, be sure that the script and the function are in the same folder. There are ways around this, but it's just simply simpler if you put the two into the same folder here. So the script is there, and this is aimed at people who are very new to MATLAB. So I'm going to skip a lot of it because it's really the speed I'm looking at. So we get a mesh of X and Y and we do some data points. And so I'm not going to go through this line by line. But just to give you an idea. So there's X, Y and Z. So there's D, which is a combination of X, Y and Z. We made up some translation values. We made up a rotation in X, rotation in Y and rotation in Z and we got our rotation matrix in line 48 and then we got our new data point R by D so remember D is the original one you rotated it plus the translation and we, we threw in a bit of noise so we had the original data point we translated it we rotated it, we threw in a bit of noise, and then we're going to run the three ICP settings. So this is the Bruce for the Bruce Force, this is the Bruce Brute Force method on line 59. On line 88 is the KD trees, which is a data structure. I'm not explaining it here, but it's just a way of executing the search. Uh, faster and then on line 118 here uh, because in real life you have so many data points you'd have to chuck some of them out so what we're doing here is we're excluding some of the data points it's just so that we end up on line 126 with a partial data point cloud so I've run this already and I've got the result there. So 
So there is the brute force method. Uh, red and blue are the original state, and then that's the plot there of uh, the merge state. And there's the brute force, brute forced matching, and we're getting up to 5.1 seconds after 15 iterations. With the KD3 matching and extrapolation, we're down to 0.59 of a second. So, and visually it looks pretty good there. So, and we've cut the execution time by a factor of 10. Remember before it was 5.1 seconds. Now we're down to 0.59 seconds. So we've speeded it up by a factor of 10. And then in real life, you'd start dumping data just to select it. And when we did it there, uh, the results aren't too great looking, and we got down to 0.93 of a second. So on this particular execution or method, it looks like the KD3 is the best, but this won't always be the case because uh, you'd have to be able to cut out some of the data. And what we did here, the data that we ex uh, excluded was sort of fairly pertinent. Okay, so hope that helps a little. Thanks very much for listening.